Welcome back to glycogenolysis in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to go over another enzyme that's involved in glycogen catabolism, and that's the glycogen debranching enzyme. Now, in the previous video, we went over the mechanism of glycogen phosphorylase. And we saw that glycogen phosphorylase removed terminal glucose units on glycogen as glucose 1-phosphate, which are then going to go through one successive isomerization and then enter glycolysis without any other phosphorylations. The glycogen debranching enzyme has a different mechanism. It's not a phosphorylase, meaning you don't get units of glucose removed as glucose 1-phosphate. The glycogen debranching enzyme is a hydrolase. It's going to use water instead of phosphate to remove the glucose units. As a result, you don't get a phosphorylated glucose, you only get glucose. The glycogen debranching enzyme has both a transferase activity and a glucosidase activity. Now, previously there could have been other glucose units on this branch. Okay? These glucose units were removed through glycogen phosphorylase activity as shown there. Okay? However, once you get down to a branch that has four glucose units, it turns out glycogen debranching enzyme has a certain activity that's very important. When it gets down to a branch that's four glucoses long, the terminal three are then moved onto a longer chain nearby. That's the transferase activity. So as you see these three blue glucoses moved over here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. There's two reasons this happens. Number one, glycogen phosphorylase, for whatever reason, cannot act on branches of any kind that are less than five glucose units long. So once it gets to four glucose units, it turns out glycogen phosphorylase cannot continue. However, the glycogen debranching enzyme cannot operate on branches that are longer than one glucose unit. So we have one that's four, and we're kind of in a predicament. So like we said, these three right here get transferred onto a nearby chain, which eliminates the need for glycogen phosphorylase, and then the glycogen debranching enzyme can now act on this glucose unit in the box. All right? Now, glycogen debranching enzyme, at least through this glucosidase activity, is a hydrolase. It just simply uses water and cleaves this bond right there. Okay, And when it cleaves that bond, we get a glucose unit. This glucose that I boxed, that is that glucose once we hydrolyze it off. These glucose units that we added over here, potentially glycogen phosphorylase could get rid of those. We cleave that, that gets a glucose 1-phosphate. Cleave that, that gets a glucose 1-phosphate. Cleave this, it gives a glucose 1-phosphate, and so on and so forth. And then we're down to four in this branch. We'd have to move these three over probably here or here, depending. And then another glycogen debranching enzyme reaction for this. Okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Remember, glycogen phosphorylase can only act on any branch or any chain of glucose units that is longer than four glucose units long, so it has to be five or more. But the glycogen debranching enzyme can only act on a chain that has only one glucose unit. Let's now look at the molecular mechanism by which it occurs. This glucose right here that's on the branch has already had all the other glucose units here removed. There's nothing there left. And it turns out that the glycogen phosphorylase actually has no activity here. It doesn't break this branch bond. Instead, we need something called the glycogen debranching enzyme, as we've been talking about. So let's go over how it works. There's a base in the active site. The base attacks, nucleophilically attacks, this carbon right here, and that forces these electrons to leave and extract a proton from a base in the active site. So now, this glucose right here is covalently attached to base 1. And this glycogen chain right here, the part that's not the branch, the main chain, that's this down here. That's that right there. So now, as we saw above here, we have base 1 that's going to be covalently attached to this glucose unit that was part of the branch. We have base 2 that's deprotonated and a water that's allowed into the active site. Base 2 deprotonates water and the resulting effective hydroxide attacks this carbon right here and then we get loss of base 1. 
And then what we ultimately get there is alpha D glucose. Now, I want you to pay attention to one thing that's very important. What was the product of glycogen phosphorylase? It was glucose 1-phosphate units. The glycogen debranching enzyme does not have the same mechanism. It is a hydrolase enzyme. So it uses water to break the bonds, not phosphate. As a result, we don't get glucose 1-phosphate. We get glucose, just simple glucose, because this was a hydrolase mechanism. Okay, we used water, and the water is essentially right here as an OH group. Okay, this glucose will essentially have to then be phosphorylated by hexokinase, and then it will be in the form glucose 6-phosphate, which can enter glycolysis. Okay, so a key difference between the debranching enzyme and glycogen phosphorylase is glycogen phosphorylase releases glucose 1-phosphate units. The debranching enzyme only releases simple glucose units. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.